The conflict in northern Ethiopia has displaced hundreds of thousands of people and rattled the region. Observers fear instability in the largest country in the Horn of Africa could spread beyond its borders. Here's how it got to this point. On November 4th, 2020, forces loyal to the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, attacked federal military bases in northern Ethiopia, according to the federal government. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said the attack crossed a red line and ordered the military to confront TPLF forces. This, he said, came after months of provocation and incitement. On November 6, the Ethiopian military said it launched a campaign to retake TPLF strongholds in the north using precision airstrikes and ground forces to attack military targets, including Tigray's largest city, Makala. However, TPLF officials say there have been civilian casualties, including non-military targets, such as schools, places of worship, and infrastructure. To understand the roots of the conflict, you have to go back decades. Tigray, Ethiopia's northernmost region, played a vital role in the country's recent history. TPLF was an armed political movement that helped liberate Ethiopia from the brutal Derg regime, which finally fell from power in 1991. Then, a Tigrayan ex-fighter, Melis Zanawe, led the new coalition government in 1991 that instituted a system known as ethnic federalism, which divided the country along ethnic lines into 10 regions with some autonomy. Melis and the coalition of political parties he founded, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, or EPRDF, held near total control in the country. Political dissent and free speech were severely restricted. But the country also enjoyed rapid economic growth during Melis's time in power, with impressive advances in the industrial sector. Still, ethnic resentment also grew. Tigrayans comprised only 6% of the population, but held outsized power in the military, business, and politics. Melis died in 2012. Widespread protests followed, leading to the resignation of his successor, Prime Minister Halimeriam Desalin. Then, Abiy Ahmed, a young ethnic Oromo, rose to power in 2018. Abiy instituted a raft of reforms, including negotiating a peace deal with neighboring Eritrea and releasing political prisoners. In 2019, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. But some of Abiy's reforms also deepened divisions. In 2019, he dissolved the ruling party, the EPRDF, and created the Prosperity Party. The TPLF refused to join the newly created party. By September 2020, the feud escalated. The Tigray region held elections, defying the central government, which had postponed national elections because of the coronavirus. The central government called the elections illegal. The rift grew in October, when the central government suspended funding for and cut ties with the TPLF. Tigray's administration said this amounted to a declaration of war. And once the war began, it quickly escalated. On November 14th, the conflict spread in the region beyond its borders, when the TPLF launched rocket attacks against neighboring Eritrea. TPLF leaders accused Eritrea of involvement in the conflict and said the country was a legitimate target because Asmara Airport and other locations in Eritrea were being used to support Ethiopian federal forces. On November 28th, days after surrounding the city of Makala, Ethiopian federal forces retook the city center, its airport, and military base. On the same day, Abiy declared an end to the conflict he termed a law enforcement operation. But later, TPLF's leader, Tabretzian Gebremikael, vowed to fight on. The ensuing conflict has already involved neighboring states and shaken the Horn of Africa, which has long viewed Ethiopia as a pillar of regional stability. As is often the case in war, the most vulnerable people bear the brunt of the conflict. Cellular service and internet access in the region have largely been cut off. Communications blackout makes it nearly impossible 
to get accurate information about the conflict and its humanitarian cost. Tens of thousands of civilians fled to Gray, many on foot or on rickety boats across Ethiopia's Tekeze River, crowding into refugee camps across the Sudanese border. Although the fighting slowed in late December, its impact continues, with tens of thousands internally displaced and seeking refuge elsewhere. In Tigray, aid workers were denied access to refugee camps by the federal government. Relief agencies warned of continued dire conditions in what they called a full-scale humanitarian crisis in the region. As access to parts of the Tigray region is still restricted, the UN and other organizations say some people have died of starvation and many more are at risk in addition to the spread of COVID-19. Refugees in the camps in Sudan say they won't return to their homes because they fear for their safety, and the long-term direction of the conflict remains uncertain. <laughs>